Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are sharing with you our top 10 tips for taking a transatlantic cruise. Yeah, we just got off a transatlantic cruise <laughs> a few days ago and while we were on, we booked two more. We took some of these tips into consideration while we did it and we thought, ooh, we've made a few mistakes. So mm -hmm. we're gonna help you avoid those. The first mistake we made on our transatlantic cruise was not realizing or not thinking about the fact that the sun is gonna be in the same place mm. for the entire cruise. So mm -hmm. you're you're sailing east to west or west to east. Well, the sun is always gonna you know, be on the south uh, side of the ship. So if you have a balcony that faces that direction, you're gonna be in the sun every single day mm -hmm. and it's gonna be kind of a blazing, <laughs> glaring sun so if you the, like it this hot. strong daytime heat coming yeah. at you know some people actually like that a couple yeah. people were upset that they were not on that side and wanted to be on the side that we were on but we thought it was a little too warm for our room yeah we were and actually our room's air conditioning really wasn't keeping up with mm -hmm. the heat mm -hmm. uh during, yeah. during the day mm -hmm. so we wished we were on the uh north facing side of yes. the ship and so depending if you're going east to west, west to east, mm -hmm. <laughs> figure out which side is gonna be north and south and make mm -hmm. that a big consideration because we found that during the day, especially if you like if you don't like maybe to get sunburned and you wanna sit on your balcony, mm -hmm. you're gonna be in the sun the entire day if you're on the south side, mm -hmm. in the shade the entire day if you're on the north side. So yes. huge factor and we made plans to rectify that. <laughs> on the cruises we booked on the ship. So that's number one. <laughs> yes, all right. So the second one I'll share because it personally affects me is I do struggle from time to time with motion sickness and I haven't for a while on several cruises until we were on this one. The main reason is that once we were out in the Atlantic itself, um, those waves were pretty strong. They were strong. Um, they were really high, and re even the staff was having trouble keeping up with the movement. They were just, you know, swaying as well. Obviously, they're they're trained and they're used to it, so they could move around with the trays and everything. But the rest of us were having a hard time even just walking around several days of the sea days out in the middle of the ocean. So. Um, you need to pack something a little stronger than normal because I did end up having to go to reception and they were offering um, complimentary uh, motion sickness medication. And so I took what they had there, which was a little bit stronger than the ginger chews, which I normally use. And those did, I did pretty well with those for most of the days, but uh, on two particular sea days, it was pretty tough. So um, just keep that in mind, either bring something with you or plan to, you know, for the possibility of having to take something off the ship from them. Yeah. Uh, third thing is that your internet and connectivity will be pretty bad once mm -hmm. you reach the middle of the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. We started out with pretty good internet on mm -hmm. our ship and we were on a new ship and it, it was really quite quite good. We were uploading mm -hmm. actually videos to our YouTube channel <laughs> from the ship in the in the Atlantic when we were at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And once we got to about the middle of the Atlantic, just all internet went Gone. out. <laughs> Even the TV channels and mm -hmm. the TV went out. And then a couple days later, we turned the TV on and they had switched. And now they were from European channels. Now we had American channels. <laughs> and so everything was switched. But in that middle couple mm -hmm. of days there, you will just basically have nothing. Mm -hmm. There was a little internet a access. A little here and there. It wasn't gone all day, but it wasn't like you were gonna get much done. So if you have work to do or like, you know, forget about doing things like FaceTime or, you know, video calls or things like that, that's gonna be a way tougher um, to do. So make sure that you accommodate for the fact that you may not have service in the middle of the ocean out there. Yeah. Uh, next one is something we accounted for, but we didn't think it would affect us quite as much <laughs> as it did. Mm -hmm. And that is that you will lose or gain an hour basically every day that you're in the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. And different than doing it all in one big chunk and getting that jet lag. I don't know if they've coined the term ship lag yet. But <laughs> we, I think we, should, we could start it. Yeah, ship we, lag. We thought this would be easy like just one hour a day it'll be it'll be easy mm -hmm. we found that by the end of the six or seven days 
it was still the same cumulative effect <laughs> of the jet lag because if you do seven 25 hour days in a row, mm -hmm. that will catch up to you. Yeah, and the other thing about that too is to keep in mind that because you don't have service, your phones, and if you have like an Apple Watch, they will probably not update automatically because some of them are not real time zones. They're just having you adjust as you go along. So you may not be able to change yeah. the time. So you have to be conscious of the correct time will always be displayed on the TV screen. Um, so make sure that you always check that because that will be your correct time. Ship time is always going to be displayed there. So make sure you're checking yeah. that. Because yeah. you, you probably won't get that automatic update for several days. Yeah, they're just making up time zones on the <laughs> ship. So you have to really follow, pay attention. And every yeah. morning they would they would come on and say, oh, it's now 8.30. And be like, wait, we didn't. You're like, oops, I did not I change. Didn't do it. <laughs> uh, another important thing to think about is that the entertainment on the ship will probably not be as mm. good as you are used to. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that when you're doing a cruise in the Caribbean, they can easily fly entertainers. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you're leaving from Miami and going to mm -hmm. Mexico, they can have entertainers on board and then just fly them back. But if you're doing a transatlantic cruise, mm -hmm. whatever entertainers they put on, they have to go all the way across the Atlantic with you. And they have to fly them all the way back mm -hmm. to their home country. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have like shows with like 50 people doing them mm -hmm. uh, for the most part. Mm -hmm. Some ships may be a little different, but mm -hmm. for the most part, you're going to have more singers, uh, comedians. Like one, yeah, one, one or person. two person acts, much smaller, um, you know, ensembles yeah. for the acts. And a lot of these people can't take that much time off and be mm -hmm. stuck on it they do their mm -hmm. act and they're stuck there for six days so right. you may have some repeat performances there's just a lot of things that go into that mm -hmm. but understand that the entertainment might not be what you're used to and uh right. that can be disappointing for some yeah but that's one of the reasons why the cruise is probably a little bit cheaper mm -hmm. per day than, uh, yeah. than normal yeah which we'll talk about later but um another one too is that if there are mechanical issues on the ship um know that if that happens on a sea day it probably will not be able to be addressed until they get to a port because obviously they're out in the middle of the ocean and if they have to get parts and they don't already have that kind of stuff we had that happen on our ship we had a bay of elevators thankfully it was just two elevators that went out in the middle of the ocean and they were not able to address that until we got several days later until we got to a port yeah and that was a little bit of an inconvenience because mm -hmm. it was all of the back elevators mm -hmm. unfortunately so, the ones that were closest to our room yeah. <laughs> uh, so you have things that could go wrong and they just can't fix it mm -hmm. on a transatlantic yeah uh, another thing for the transatlantic is that it is even more important mm. than ever <laughs> to not miss your uh not miss the ship mm -hmm. on the port right mm -hmm. before you do the crossing because if you miss it you're gonna miss the entire cruise you are out of luck <laughs> yeah if you miss a port in mexico and you're going to another city in mexico you can easily get there but this one you're just gonna miss your cruise. So. Yep, you miss that last port before it goes to the ocean. That's it. Yeah, be very careful <laughs> with your DIY shore excursions mm -hmm. in your very last port before the mm -hmm. ocean. Don't cut it close. Right. Uh, and you won't have a bad experience. Yeah, <laughs> actually we, we DIY'd ours because we were meeting up with, with friends at our last port right before we hit the Atlantic, but we gave ourselves a two hour window um, to get there early enough and we were perfectly fine. But if you're going to do that, make sure that you are in control of you know being able to get back to the ship in time. So one of the things you can do to combat some of these negatives is set yourself up with a positive. Mm. And so you will have a lot more free time on the six mm -hmm. or seven day crossing. Maybe the entertainment's not gonna be so great. So mm -hmm. what can you do? Mm. I think a good idea is to book yourself the thermal suite. Mm -hmm. Definitely. The thermal suite is one of our favorite things overall on cruise ships. We book it on every single cruise ship practically that we've been on. I think there's maybe only one or two we've not done it on, but almost all of them we do it because it is such a nice relaxing place, but it's also a place where you can go sit and read a book if you want to. Um, and a lot of the ships that are you know, doing the transatlantic uh, crossings have 
a little bit bigger um, thermal suites, especially this one we were just on the Seascape. Um, they had a little bit bigger thermal suite, so it was really nice to um, have all of that space, not just to enjoy the saunas and the pool and the world, the whirlpool, and there's also a sunbathing deck on that one, but we also had plenty of space to sit there and just read a book. Several people did that um, as well. I could see them going and relaxing in there quietly and reading. Yeah, and with the Transatlantic, the thermal suite per day is usually quite a bit mm -hmm. cheaper. So it might be like mm -hmm. $199 per person for a seven night mm -hmm. cruise. We paid $277 mm -hmm. for a 17 night cruise. Mm -hmm. So really only an extra $78 for an extra 10 nights. Yeah. So you're gonna, per day, it's just a really good value if you're doing a transatlantic. So definitely mm -hmm. uh, look into that. Another one you can do is to plan to eat a few of your meals, mm. at least, and especially a restaurant. Yes. Because you will be eating in the main dining room like 17 15 yeah. how long your cruises nights in a yes, row yes at least a couple of weeks so set yourself up for a little variety by booking a couple of the specialty restaurants and make sure you do that um you know when you get on board or maybe after just a few days when you've had a chance to review what's on there and look at the menus um, give yourself that option give you something a little bit different and a little bit different wait staff completely different uh, menu and you know a whole different experience as well for your meals because you could get you know maybe a little tired of maybe that experience or the buffet experience and you want to mix it up a little bit so definitely that there's so many great specialty restaurants available on cruise ships uh, anymore that it's always a good option to give it a shot yeah, and one of the things that we think is important about a transatlantic is getting a good price. Mm. These can be among the cheapest cruises per day out mm -hmm. there. In fact, mm -hmm. they usually are. If you just go look and sort by lowest price, you can set on any of the major search engines your search terms to like over 14 nights mm -hmm. for transatlantic, mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll see the price. And you know, we we booked our balcony cabin uh, on our, our next transatlantic. I think it was. Uh, like sixteen hundred dollars total, mm -hmm. but I've seen them even as low as six seven hundred dollars per person, mm -hmm. um, which makes it a really good deal. You can yeah. sometimes travel on a transatlantic for the same price you would mm -hmm. a seven night Caribbean cruise because those they just tend to be yeah. a little bit higher because mm -hmm. not as many people have the time off. Right, Kids that, can't that take big it. chunk of time. Yeah, mm -hmm. so make sure you get a good price. We've normally found that. A long, right now, actually, we're finding that a long time out from the cruise, the prices are remaining pretty high. But then there is a point where it's kind of like midpoint to the mm -hmm. cruise that the prices are coming down. And then right before the cruise, they've either sold out or they've, they've mm -hmm. gone back up. So yeah, we're <laughs> so looking, it's kind of a roll of the dice in that window. Yeah, we're looking, you know, six months out on a mm -hmm. cruise right now, transatlantic to get the best price. That does change, so you know, just see what you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have found that to be a pretty good window to book them uh, as of right now. Yeah, so those are our best 10 tips for a transatlantic cruise. If you have any other questions about transatlantic cruises, leave those for us down below. As we said earlier, we enjoyed it so much, we went ahead and booked two more while we were on <laughs> this one. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Give us a like on this one and we'll see you on the next one.